All right, we should be live now. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another stream with Offensive Security. My name is Siren, and uh, yeah, today we're going to be working on a machine known as On System Shell Dread. You may notice that we have a little bit of a new background as well. I will be getting into those details shortly, shortly, shortly. Um, aside from that, let's go ahead and just let everybody kind of trickle in and trickle in and trickle in. If you're new, feel free to say hi in the chat and uh, we'll be rocking and rolling here in about the next 30 minutes and uh, 29 minutes to be approximate. Um, but yeah, again, this is Siren with Offensive Security. If you're just trickling in, go ahead and, you know, pass along the link, twitch.tv forward slash offsec official, and uh, pass it to uh, some of your friends. And let's see what we got here. I have a few announcements. Well, not really like announcements that already haven't been made, but we're going to talk about some things, which is going to be fun. I see we got 24 people live. Welcome, guys. Welcome, welcome. I got my laptop set up here, and I can kind of glance to the left and see the chat. If there's any problems with my microphone, just let me know, and um, we'll kind of get down to business to defeat the Huns here in about 30 minutes. The reason we like to start early is because we like to treat it kind of like a conference, you know, like where someone's on stage, you want people to walk in, be able to sit down, open up their laptop, that kind of thing, and, uh, you know, have some coffee, use the restroom, and, uh, yeah, then you can launch the machine with us, and uh, we'll be rocking and rolling here shortly. If you, again, have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Mooncake. Oh my god, it's Siren. Oh my god, it's Mooncake. How are you doing, Mooncake? You having a good one? Happy Friday. Happy Friday to you, my friend. Seems like we might have a little bit of a small audience today. Probably a larger audience once we uh, get started. But um, yeah, I'll post the link in a couple minutes once we get some more people to trickle in. Um, then we'll kind of just roll from there. Mooncake5000 says, yay, doing well, just finished cooking, and now to eat and enjoy the stream and box. That's the attitude, my dude. I actually just had a salad, which was delicious, a Caesar salad, and, uh, kind of trying to be, like, conscientious, or just conscious of, like, my, uh, intake these days. 0x1 Insomnia says, hello, excited to be here. Well, welcome to the stream. My friend, welcome to the stream. 0x1 Insomnia or 0x Insomnia with the one. I like it. I like it. I like it. And uh, welcome to the stream, dude. Absolutely. So today's machine is going to be on system shell dread. I'll go ahead and put that in the chat. It's going to be on system shell dread. And uh, we're going to be able to play that on PG Play. We kind of rank this machine as an easy one. But seeing as the last one we did was, you know, moderate uh, to, so I would even consider somewhat difficult, especially if you're new, uh, we kind of want to fluctuate that, you get me? And uh, make sure that, you know, we're providing a good balance of difficulty of machines. This one is extremely beginner friendly. If you have friends that are interested in cybersecurity and they kind of want to get an idea of what a typical methodology might look like, um, then 
you know, they can absolutely do that. Uh, we have WHTV RUW says, hello, we can't see you. That's okay. That's actually intentional. Uh, I'm not on webcam. I don't, I don't go on webcam. Maybe one day, uh, WHT, but you know, just not today. Not today. But yeah, if you have anybody that's a beginner, this is definitely going to be a beginner friendly stream. Um, and, but it's a super nice machine and it teaches some important concepts about loot, um, which is, which is nice. To anybody who's here, uh, actually right now, you will notice that we have a new background. We invite PG Practice subscribers to join our hackathon Friday, June 16th through Sunday, June 18th. That is the hackathon Friday, June 16th through Sunday, June 18th. It's going to be a blast. I'm going to be there. It's going to be awesome. And I'm actually going to go ahead and read off some of the prizes that we're going to be giving out to winners of this hackathon. Um, let me see if I can actually find that list. Da, da, da. Okay, so what are the prizes, right? Uh, for Pen 300, the third place prize is gonna be three months of PG practice access. That's three months of PG practice access uh, for the Pen 300 prize. The second place prize is gonna be Pen 300 straight up 90 days of course, course access, excuse me, stuttering today, but 90 days of course access. And in first place, if you get the first place prize for Pen 300, that's straight up entire all learn one for Pen 300. So you get access to the cert itself. So if you think you're up to snuff and you want to go for your certification, the PIN 300, you want to hit that first place prize. That's going to be the L1 uh, for the PIN 300. Additionally, we have EXP 301, um, and we also have PIN 200. So for exploitation challenges, uh, third place is going to be, or binary exploitation, Third place is going to be three months again, PG practice access. Second place, you see the trend here, EXP 301, 90 day course access, dude. It's going to be awesome. First prize, L1 for EXP 301. So if you ever wanted to get into binary exploitation, BINX, as we call it for short, dude, then for sure, make sure that you're, you know, working in this hackathon and shooting for that first place prize. Uh, as far as Pen 200, what we are renowned for here at Offensive Security, our OSCP, or Offensive Security, or Offsec Certified Professional. Third place prize is going to be three months of PG practice access. Uh, second place is going to be Pen 200, 90 day course access. That's 90 days of course access to the Pen 200. And again, first place is just straight up L1 for uh, all learn one for Pen 200. So if you're looking to go for your OSCP, you've been doing some boxes and you're looking for, you know, you're looking to grab that certification, then this is, this is, uh, this is when it's going to be, this is what it is. And these are the prizes, but yeah, it looks like we only have about 15 people in stream right now. Pretty small stream today. Pretty small stream. If anybody wants to talk or work up conversation, feel free. And, uh, yeah. Just realized that my laptop was unplugged and it was starting to heat up. So glad we got that. Um, glad we got that. Dun, 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 dun. 
If you had any questions that didn't make it into off sex office hours, dude, feel free to feel free to say something. I see 22 people. Feel free to say hello. Don't be shy. And uh, yeah, we're gonna we're just gonna straight up kind of hack this computer today, and it's gonna be pretty awesome. Pretty awesome, especially if you're new. This is exactly for you. Like. This machine is going to be super useful, and we're going to go over some takeaway concepts at the end. Um, but yeah, be ready to rock and roll here soon enough. There we go. Now we got some chat rolling in. Dust Collector says, hello. I am eating dinner, and I'm excited for the stream. Heck yeah, Dust Collector. Well, enjoy your dinner. What you eating there, buddy? What you eating? What's on the, what's on the, the ballot? The, what's on the, the plate this evening? What do we have? Steak and eggs. Boy, howdy. Steak and eggs. How about it? I don't think you can go wrong with steak and eggs ever. That is, a, that is a good combination, my friend. A little bit of toast, maybe. But yeah. I have a huge ham steak and fries on the side. Not healthy, but very... Does, dude. Ham steak and fries on the side. Now we're cooking. Now we're cooking. And an overwhelming amount of barbecue sauce. That's the only way to do it. See, as someone here who would take off my hat to uh, the barbecue, uh, that soul food. You can never have too much barbecue sauce. Never too much. CS Fortune, welcome back. Howdy, Siren. Love your streams. Glad to hear it, dude. Glad to hear it. Welcome back to the stream. Um, Omar, 0x1, says, Hi, noob sec. <laughs> barbecue sauce is life. Yeah, yeah. I've been actually... Um, doing some kind of like unrelated but you know i've been kind of doing some meditative stuff lately and i found these things called tibetan like meditative bowls and or like tibetan singing bowls so i don't have any music going in the background but you know we can we can certainly i don't know if you guys can hear that No worries there, Amar. Little bit of trolling is okay, you know? Little bit of laughter. Some jokes are totally fine. Mooncake 5000, we can hear them loud and clear. All right, I'm going to give it a go. I'm practicing this thing. So the idea is that you, like, strike it with the mallet, and then you want to, like, go around the rim of the bowl, and you kind of carry the sound. So it sounds a little something like this. my favorite toy recently my favorite toy I have a smaller one too I've actually got two sizes I got a large one and a small one this one is more brassy the lightsaber I mean the lightsaber is pretty good I can't deny it I can't deny it. I can't. He caught me. I do love the lightsaber. Yeah, no, barbecue sauce is life, Mooncake. What you got? What kind of barbecue sauce you got? Sweet, spicy, uh, Carolina barbecue. I mean, well, what are we talking here? North Carolina barbecue. Okay. Because you're going to get a different taste from every, you know, all around every state. Spicy, yeah, I like it. 
I like it spicy, and then I just mix a little bit of sweet in there. You know, like I'll, I'll, uh, I'll put some sweet barbecue sauce on it, a little bit, mix it up in with the spiciness, and that's how I that's how I get down. You are not. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> So Carolina barbecue is like really tangy, right? It's got it's got a little kick to it, and it's kind of tangy too. Um, it's really nice, really really nice. All right, guys. Honestly, we are about fourteen minutes away. If you want to boot up on System Shell Dread, you know, super casual machine, super laid back, and. Uh, you know, definitely, you know, shouldn't have too many problems with this. And if so, we'll be here for you. We'll be here for you. I do have some additional announcements regarding this month. Carolina's mustard base is that what it is CS fortune KC is tomato based okay so that's what it is it's like a little bit of mustard they, they mix in different types of mustard into the barbecue sauce and I tell you it's it's good man makes me tear up thinking about it it's so delicious it's sinful absolutely sinful but <laughs> aside from that um yeah I have, for any, any fans that enjoy these streams, I've got some good news for you. I've got some good news. Siren is not just streaming one day this month. This is not the only stream that we're going to have. In fact, 2.30 p.m. Eastern on the 14th, we're going to be leading up into the hackathon. So if you guys want practice going over some serious boxes, man. And I mean some serious Windows boxes, Active Directory, the whole deal, all the juice that everybody's been asking for for a long time, we're going to provide it. And we're going to go ahead and get that Active Directory in there. June, make sure you mark this down, guys. June 14th, 2.30 p.m. Eastern, and June 15th, 2.30 p.m. Eastern, we're going to be doing back-to-back -back machines there. And then Siddiqui, my boy Siddiqui, super proud of him, super proud. He's going to be concluding the preparation for the hackathon with a machine of his own. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be two machines from me and then a conclusion machine from Siddiqui. And uh, then it's off to the races, boys and girls. June 16th, it is off to the races with the hackathon and uh, all those rewards. In fact, I may go ahead and just kind of paste those rewards in the chat. That way everybody kind of knows what the prizes are that Offensive Security is going to be giving out. Let me make sure that it looks good. All right. I think that looks right, and I'm going to send it now. Okay, it did not take into account the spacing. Disregard. Entirely <laughs> <laughs> Twitch is like, what is spacing? What are return carriage new lines? I d <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and post it uh, up in our official Discord server, and I think we actually have it in the announcements. Don't we have it in the announcements? Because I have another thing that I would like to give you. And if you have any questions related to it at all, feel free to ask, guys. Feel free to ask. Um, but we have this here. Um, if you go to the Discord and check out the general chat, uh, we have the prizes coming up. Go ahead and give that like a like emoji, thumbs up emoji, Twitch emoji, whatever you like. And uh, yeah. We're gonna, those are, those are the prizes that we're gonna be giving out. It's still readable. Thanks, Insomnia. Appreciate it, appreciate it. Thank you for understanding. They don't know return carriage, new lines. All right, and let me grab this here. Additionally, we 
Will these videos be on YouTube? You bet your bottom dollar. Z U F three L D Zuffold Zuffold. I hope I pronounced that right. Zuffold. Will these be on YouTube? Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Additionally, guys, for any additional questions, see the above. Related to the hackathon FAQ, see the above. Again, that's in general chat, in Discord. I'm also going to go ahead and paste that into Twitch. Andy, welcome to the stream. We finally got some people coming in here. We got some people, some familiar faces. We got a Akush. Hello, Akush. Fret not, fret not. That's right, my friend. Fret not, fret not. Fret not. And let's see. I think we're looking good here. I'm actually doing the stream from my couch today. So you're going to hear like leather in the background as I rustle around. As I rustle. Move around some of these Tibetan bowls. You can read through the FAQs as I give you a sound bath, right? <laughs> That's what they call these. Super relaxing. Go ahead and tell your friends, though, guys, uh, that uh, Siren is live on twitch.tv forward slash offsec official. Um, and today we're doing on system shell dread that is available on PG Play. So just go to portal.offsec.com, uh, log in, connect to the VPN, launch the machine on system shell dread. And that's the machine that we're going to hack today. Couch, this is the proper way. I can see the Mandalorian gif right now, Andy. This is the way. This is the way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let me move my microphone a little to the right. And put this over here. <coughs> and we'll take a look at Discord in the general chat. All your videos end up on YouTube or stay on Twitch, newbie question. Um, all the videos end up on YouTube. All of them, my dudes. All of them. Every single one of them ends up on YouTube because it's meant to be that. Like, when I was studying, I didn't have that kind of resource. And, you know, now it's just a free resource, dude. You can totally go there. Um, if you're, if you're learning and you need direction, there's a whole playlist. Let me go ahead and grab that right now. I'm not even going to play ball. I'm not even going to play, you know, I'm not even going to think twice about this. Let's go to offensive security on YouTube. Sorry for the distance on the mic. I'm like leaning over like three things. Off sec. And then you just go to playlists and click right on machine walkthroughs. This is our most popular playlist, of course. Um, and... There are all the videos we've ever done. Um, if you think that that would be of use to you, make sure you click the actual, you know, the YouTube link rather than just hitting play because that'll play one video. Please, 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 if you are new to this field, golly geez, bookmark that and add it to the front because that is a methodology you can boot those machines up for free, vast just majority of them, and um, directly available from Offensive Securities or Offsex uh, Proving Grounds Play with a couple machines from PG Practice. But uh, yeah, absolutely. 
Absolutely, absolutely. Your thought process is different than mine. Hey, you know, different strokes for different folks is what I say. So, uh, yeah, different strokes for different folks. Love the different ideas. Heck yeah. Right on, right on. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's take a look back at the chat. I'm going to grab this link for the chat as well. And we have a first time chat. From TX45N says, first time stream here, joining from London, the rooftops of London. Cool, what a sight. Beginning my OSCP journey this month, very excited. Not new to the field, but new to Offsec finally. Uh, cooking whilst watching and listening, but hopefully I'll be able to make some useful suggestions this stream. TX, no pressure, no pressure. Enjoy your cooking. If you want to have this on in the background, we're going to be hacking and cracking. And, uh, you know, maybe, <laughs> maybe uh, a little Tibetan singing bowl to center our cooking experience. Absolutely, absolutely. And Dust Collector says, congrats at Wally W4. Felt the same, to be honest. Don't fret it. You are growing every day. Wally says, I recently passed the OSCP and decided to get back into CTS. They have been kicking my butt. It's like I lost all my OSC powers. <laughs> a lot of people, that's, that's why we say like it's a, it's, it's a taste of things to come, right? It is absolutely a taste of things to come. Um, but, you know, once you have a couple hundred machines under your belt, you're going to be just as competent as any. And if you work on your methodology while working on those machines, boy, you'll be a Navy, Navy SEAL of Kraken. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. It just takes time. And, guys, this is not a sprint. This is... You know, this is not the Olympics, some kind of sprint. This is a marathon, and, um, you know, it's a career choice. At least it is for me. It's a lifestyle, and uh, this, is, this is what we do. This is what we do. Speaking of, we have about two minutes until we get started. And, uh, yeah, I see people trickling in now, trickling in now. Again, the quick rundown. Today's machine, On System Shell Dread. Uh, for anybody new, we have the hackathon starting Friday, June 16th through Sunday, June 18th. I'm streaming Active Directory boxes on the 14th and the 15th at 2.30 p.m. Eastern. If you didn't catch all that, and Siddiqui's going to have the conclusion there um, on the Friday with another PG practice box, all leading up into Offensive Securities or Offsex uh, hackathon which is going to be super, super, super sick. List of prizes are up above and also in the general chat on Discord. If you missed anything we had in our 30-minute discussion here, please, please, please just go to youtube.com and uh, subscribe to Offensive Security. Smash the bell icon to get notified when these uh, walkthrough videos are posted. Um, that may just be a convenient thing for you to have, you know? Get a notification on your phone, you know, Offensive Security has a new walkthrough up and the and their most popular playlist, which is the Machine Walkthroughs playlist. And uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Siren is my best for hacking teacher. Thank you so much. That's so sweet.
I completely just realized that I was muted. I completely just realized that I was muted. I apologize for that, for that like 20 seconds there of, of mutation. Um, but yeah, I got my environment variables exported and uh, we're good to go. We're good to go. Let's go ahead and get an nmap scan in. This time I want you guys to provide me the arguments. We're doing 65,535 ports. What are, I'm gonna say, I'll give you guys SV. We're going for service version. What else do we want to tack on here? What do we usually tack on here? Dash P dash, already got it. Sinus cosinus, absolutely. Dash SV at the target IP, I like it. Dash P dash, I like the arguments here. Full port coverage, 100%. You don't want to miss any of those Webman ports, man. Running on port 43,232 or something, you know? Obscurity, security through obscurity. You don't want to miss those ports. So dash dash open. I'm going to go ahead. I don't see simple scripts out of there, but I'm going to tack on the IP. Yes, and dash dash open. The reason we do dash dash open is because we don't want to run all these scripts against closed ports, dude. Like that's just going to be a waste of time. And uh, let's, it speeds up the process and it hits the ports that are open. So you can hit the return key to get the kind of like a percentage done. And then once we're done with this, we're just going to go ahead and rock those nodes into cherry tree. And uh, yeah. Rock those notes into cherry tree. We'll do some highlighting, check out any services, versions, see what kind of attack surfaces we're working with, start to identify the low hanging fruit, that kind of stuff, right? And fret not, fret not, as Akush says, fret not, fret not. These will be available on YouTube eh, within an hour or two after the stream is done. Wish $2,500 was a lifetime membership. It'll be several years. So InMap didn't check before if the ports are open. And then use scripts for that. That's correct. That is correct. Um, no, it'll check if the ports... It's kind of correct. It'll check that the ports are open, right? But we don't want the scripts and the processing power to be going towards, you know, a closed port. That's just sending info that's not necessary, unnecessary traffic, and so on and so forth. So already we have a suggestion based upon what we have here, right? I'm going to copy this. If I can actually copy it, that'd be nice. Get to cherry tree, in map. There we are. And we'll give it a highlight so it's more legible, more readable, what we're doing here, right? And let's see, could you p uh, please paste the link for that machine to do with you or someone maybe have the URL on their hands? There you are. That's a link to the playlist. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, smash the bell, etc. But we're going to keep going with the methodology here. So let's identify some of the low-hanging fruit on this one. We have two ports. One looks like SSH is running on 61 or 1,000, right? And we have anonymous FTP login allowed on FTP. Like I said, guys, this is an easy machine, but we're going to kind of be fluctuating, right? Um, for anybody advanced, they probably know exactly what's going on. Um, anonymous login, so on and so forth. But I want to remind you that June 14th and 15th and 16th, we've got back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back Active Directory boxes straight from PG Practice, guys, straight from PG Practice. 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard is when we're going to do the soft start, same way we do it here. And um, if you're looking, if you're more advanced and you're looking for more of a challenge with Offsex Active Directory, then that's when you need to be on. Um, but let's go ahead. And take a look. So we have Debian, 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 yes. Target OS is going to be Debian. Doesn't look like we have a web port at all, so this is just not applicable. Um, host name, do not have that kind of discovery information yet. No enum on that. I do need to get the IP address in, address in just so we uh, stay consistent. Right? If I could echo, my key is like stuck. There we go. 
and I'll copy that and paste that up here. Right, we always want to have our IP up at the top. Now let's get down to business. Let's get busy. Uh, we're going to close that and blow this up for legibility. FTP at the target IP on 21. I'm going to log in with the username anonymous and the password of anonymous. And just starting out in IT, so it's a lot of money for me. Gotcha. Yeah, man, it's definitely one of those things you want to shoot for, but if if you look at the cost, the way I think of it is just look at the cost versus the benefit. Um, there's a meme that we've had for years that is still directly relevant, and it's those infosec salaries. Am I right? So information security salaries are pretty good. Um, but let's let's continue along. If you catch my drift, let's type dir, and we didn't get anything. Nothing came back. Can anybody tell me a trick that we learned from one of our previous streams? Oh, OSCP is definitely still the cert to go for, uh, Red Sly Fox. And uh, yeah, also, if you can get your company to pay for it, dude, that's where it's at, let me tell you. So um, let's do, anybody remember the trick here? We're not getting anything back. What's going on? Entering extended passive mode. Here comes the directory listing. Like, like what's happening? What's happening? Maybe some datas are hidden, like with dots in Linux. I like what you're thinking. A little bit hidden. There is another way to list out files. Anybody tell me what command that might be? Directory traversal? I don't see it. I don't see it. We could turn off passive. Here's a little trick. Why don't we just do ls-lsa? Boom. Bada boom, bada bing. Now we have a directory called Hannah that was previously hidden. Remember that ls, guys. So cd.hana. And let's ls lsa. Dra Dragnov says, sure, we knew that. <laughs> we knew that, we knew that. Now, what uh, what command? I mean, I'm I'm very much taking this slow. I want to take this one slow. It's an easier machine, but there are core principles behind the concepts of loot that we need to identify and understand as intruders. So, what are we looking for? Get and file name. Get idrsa. Okay, that's the protocol we're looking for. Get underscore idrsa. And there it is. And then I'll type by 221, goodbye. And I'm gonna move the IDRSA into my files directory. Notice my structure here. I have a directory for files for each machine. What info can I give to my team? I have, uh, or just, you know, just a, a nice place to get everything that you can exfil from a target, right? And vulns, your vulnerabilities, any weak running services, the exploit database comes to mind. Vulnerabilities going in there where you got to tweak. For your team, if you find any hashes, right, you want to be able to access the same resource, say your SSH den, you could have a script to run through everybody's hashes and lo and behold, throughout the whole engagement, everybody's consistent with the hashes that they've collected, a chew. So we got a hashes file here, plain text passwords, obviously, and users. So let's go to files <clears throat> and let's cat the IDRSA file. So yeah, this is an SSH key. This is an SSH key, but also we need to add something to our enumeration, guys. We need to add something to our enumeration. Let's FTP at the target IP on 21. Login is anonymous, anonymous, LSLSA. Dude, we have a user, guys. We have a user here. That's, that's a real username, family. That's a real username. So let's type by, and we're gonna nano the users file and put Hannah in here. Now I cat users, and we have Hannah. Hannah, Hannah. Additionally, to stay consistent with our methodology, we're gonna have Hannah up here. And uh, now we're gonna CD into files, and we're ready to proceed. 
So, all right. I don't, let's, I don't know, guys. I don't know how to do this. How do we SSH into a target machine with an IDRSA key? With uh, this IDRSA thing? You know, we're keeping it very beginner friendly today. Like ultra beginner friendly, guys. Ultra beginner friendly. Because the next three machines that are going to come out of this month are not going to be beginner friendly, man. No, no joke. These machines are going to be no arms barred, as they say. So, uh, yeah, SSH, ID, all right, I like what I see, SSH, IDRSA, I don't think that'll work. Yes, okay, we have it from TX45N says SSH-I, IDRSA is Hannah at the target IP. Now, can anybody tell me why this won't work? What do you mean, Siren, it won't work? We have the key. We have the key. 600, ex for example. Yes. So if you're new to this and you come across SSH key or you're on an entry-level team and someone tosses you an IDRSA and you don't want to feel like a noob, because trust me, I did it once when I was on a team. I got an IDRSA file and I didn't know what it was. I mean, look, man. I was new too once, and my team was like, oh, you got a CHMOD 600 it. I was like, oh, okay. So yeah, we're going to CHMOD 600 the IDRSA. Now we're going to SSH in as Hannah, SSH-I, ID underscore RSA, as Hannah at the target IP. We'll hit yes. Oh, no, wait, connection refused, guys. Why isn't this working? Why isn't this working? What's going on? What's happening here, guys? Doesn't SSH run on port 22? All right, I'm seeing it now. TX45N-P, whatever the port was. First time chat from Old Ogre says port. Yes, 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 yes. No, not the wrong IP. We got the IP. Look, ping, target IP. It's pinging. It ain't that. Guys, let's go back to the enumeration. SSH that we highlighted is running on port 61,000. So as credit to TX goes, we're going to go ahead and up arrow this. And just at the very end, tack P, right? Dash P, 61,000. So we're going to connect with SSH directly to port 61,000 with the ID RSA CH modded as 600 and the enumerated user that we collected that was Hannah. And that's bling. That is bling. We are in as a low privileged user named Hannah. And what is the first thing that we do? Guys, what's the first thing that we do, dude? Like, first thing, this is. Is this a system, a real or system level user? Yes. Etsy password, grep I for Hannah. That's a real user. What is the first, who am I, ID? Yes. What is the first command that we type if we ever manage Get hacked, get hacked, Hannah. <laughs> oh, Akush. So, you guys make me laugh sometime. I'm losing composure. I'm losing composure, Rod Cali. Thank you, Rod Cali. It's pseudo L, guys. Pseudo L, but what's happening? Pseudo is not even found. What is going on here? What is going on? I'm going to use my breakout command. This is available on my blog at sirensecurity.io. And you look out for the uh, breakout, get that TTY article, and you'll have all of this. So it looks like Hannah doesn't know how to configure their environment variables, which mean, you know, potentially sudo is either A, not here legitimately, or B, we need to actually confirm that it's not here by exporting a much more broad um, path, 
Let's try sudo dash l. Okay. That's okay. At least we tried. At least we tried. At least we tried. And I'll exit that. Sudo, still not found. So it looks like we just don't have sudo on this machine. Now, what are, I, this time, instead of me doing a lightning round through Linux privilege escalation, um, you know, like, just enumerate the whole machine in a couple of minutes kind of level escalation, which by the way, you can find my methodology, um, all of Linux post. You can, you can find all of this over at sirensecurity.io and it's got its own page called Linux Privilege Escalation. It is a refined version of Godmilk's Guide to Linux Privilege Escalation. Um, so uh, what does that mean, real or system level user? Dude, these are the questions that we like. These are the questions. Let's cat Etsy password. Okay, so a system level user is going to be, yes, something that has either a home directory and executes bin bash, which is based per uh, Unix on Etsy skeleton directory. Notice the similarities, how anytime a new user is created, it pulls from the Etsy skeleton directory. Now, a real system level user, what were, that's it, that's the one, you found it real quick. Bookmark that escalation resource, absolutely. So what, we're, what we mean by real system level user is that it exists in the password file, it's got a home directory, it's got an ID, a user or UID attached to it and a GID attached to it. Because what is the, here's trivia time, What's the largest attack surface in the world? Can anybody tell me? I'll give you a hint. It may be the largest attack surface in the world, but we don't come in as a real user all the time. Boom. Akush has it. The web. Mooncake 5000 has it. 80, 443, 8000. Every pen tester knows it. You better know it because if you don't, Yikes, because it's the largest attack surface in the world and offensive security offers the OSWA and OSWE um, if you're interested in those certifications and those kinds of things. But that's what we mean. We didn't come in as WWW data. That's a non-system uh, non level user, right? But we, we have a real privileged user here uh, named Hannah, or at least a system level user named Hannah. That is what I mean. And I hope that that answers your question clearly. Um, as opposed to it being WWW data at shell dread, it is Hannah. Um, yes, it did. Excellent. Glad I could help. All right, guys, it's privilege escalation time. It's privilege time. What do I do? I'm new. I don't know anything about computers or Linux privilege escalation. What do we do? Where do we look, guys? Where do we look? What are the places? <coughs> Let's start seeing some suggestions. PSAUX. Okay. What are we looking for in PSAUX? I like it. It's, it's first come, first serve on these ones, guys. I'll ask back, and, and the first one was... Uh, Winds of Mo with PSAUX. Okay, but are we interested in anything running as HANA? <laughs> no, we're not interested in anything running as HANA. So I'm going to make an addendum. PSAUX and let's grep dash I for root dash dash color equals auto because we're looking for privilege escalation, right? And that really narrows down the list. We want to be UID zero. So PSAUX will go to the square brackets. Anything down past this, basically, is what we're interested in. I see a cron job, and honestly, I see VSFTP is running as root. If there was a VSFTP exploit, you know, these are valid suggestions. So what we're going to do under other and privilege escalation, uh, we're also going to put not applicable, since there was no web port here. Um, and we're going to say, you know, that, uh, from PSAUX, from PS, we have cron, you know, these are potential to try items. And in fact, since we got in so quick, I'm just going to keep this section as the to try list. 
you know? PS, we had cron, VSFTPD, right? What if these are out of date services? Out of date services? What's going on? So these are the types of things that we look for. You know, we may be able to run, you know, if it's cron, PSPY32, PSPY64, you know, these are the types of things that come to mind. These are the types of things, guys. Um, any out-of-date services? All right, next suggestion. What is something, I know someone's got my privilege escalation guide up and they're just like, oh, it's this one. Well, scripts, okay. Looking for scripts is good. Um, but more importantly, it's where might those scripts exist? Where can they exist? Where can they be executed from? Where can they be written to? Where can they be read from? Preferably all three, read, write, and execute. I'll give you a hint. There are three locations. Three locations. It isn't user. No, not user. Ben, nope. It's var temp, right? We have var temp, we have temp, and we have dev shm. Additionally, sometimes we might have forward slash opt, and you'll find a lot of scripts that run out of this location. Cough, cough. You really do. Um, but yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, cap, sewage, services, cron jobs. All right, I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and give this the lightning round. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead here and we'll see the var temp. Check the world writables. Nothing there. I always start with the world writables. Nothing there. Dev shim. Any scripts or services running out of opt? Any additional programs, cron jobs, executing things out of here? No. What about the mail? Any mail gets sent on this? No, var, spool, mail. I promise you this is just from memory and it will come with time, guys. It will come with time. Let's check out the root file system or root FS, not food FS, root FS. There we are. And is there anything here that just doesn't belong, that doesn't look like the normal standard Linux file structure? Somebody oops, so to speak? The answer is no, we don't have anything there. What about the web? Is there, okay, so what would normally be var www or var www html is not present because we don't have any Apache 2 Nginx kind of running off this machine, but at least that is there. What is the root FS? That's short for root file system, my friend. The root file system, root FS, this is it. Linux at its heart, Linux at its heart. Now, moving right along, let's CD to the Etsy directory. Is there anything in the Etsy directory that is not root root, that is not root shadow, and that is not root cups? In other words, did somebody come along, some system administrative user, did they come along, did they add something to this that, you know, may have configuration information or anything like that. Let's scroll. It's a quick scroll. Root, 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 shadow, don't care. Root, shadow, don't care. No. Is there any dot secret file? Etsy and grep dash I for dot secrets. Always look for the dot secrets. LSLSA, Etsy, password. No write access, so it's just read only. We do not have that write access to Etsy password, unfortunately. We do not have that. What, what about the, the uh, home directory for Hannah? Is there anything in here that is suggestive of where we need to go next? Any scripts, any sensitive information for exfiltration that we might be able to use on other machines? Is there anything in here? And the answer is no. We do have a local.txt. That's there. But, you know, nothing really too good there. What about the bash history? That's piped automatically to dev null. So we don't have anything there either. 
Fret not, though, we're not done. We're not done. Let's check what about the, the mount system. Let's check Etsy F-stab. Is there any mounts here? We already uh, checked for cron. We could uh, check for cron again. We'll check that here in a minute. Uh, we know it's running, and it's in our you know to-do list here is cron. Um, but we'll come back to that. With regards to... No, you're fine. Don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. You're okay. You're okay. All right. Etsy S stop. We're looking for mounts, right? We're looking for mounts. We're looking... What type of mounts are we looking for here? I'm just going to wait with my feet up because this one took me days to figure out. I remember back when I was working on my OSCP. Anything, anything, anything anybody can think of that we might be looking for with mounting information for privilege escalation? I like one suggestion, CD-ROM mounted to dev SR0, right? That is normal. We have dev SR0. I like what we're thinking about the, the, the mount and where it's mounted to. The answer I'm looking for here, to not leave too much pause in, in this recorded video, recorded stream, the answer we're looking here for, guys, is like extended file attributes or extended mount options. Um, often, like I just used to refer to them as magic mount options because sometimes you can mount something, right, with these extended permissions and you could place, say, like bin sh in there or a link file to it so that when it mounts, you could have the exit be bin shell, and that has to be done as root when mounting that kind of stuff, right? Or playing with file system stuff. So that's what we're looking for there. Um, we can also type mount and take a look. Are there any unmounted drives or any unmounted things that file entire file systems that we don't have access to because they're not mounted yet? Could we mount something particularly? Doesn't look like it. Take my word for this. This is pretty default. Um, you'll, again, you get used to it. Um, you get quick. And that's the way that it goes. Moving along to the next type of escalation, let's take a look for capabilities. So we type git cap r from the root file system. That's what that is for. Root fs. From the root file system forward, and we'll pipe any erroneous output to dev null. What is this saying, get capabilities? Get capabilities is saying, yes, there are administrative or root extended permission sets, EP, extended permissions, for, um, for a particular binary. So Jim or Bob or Greg, the administrator, comes along and they think they're clever. They've locked down the system. You know, they're a network engineer. They know what they're doing. But they give Python something like an extended permission for set user ID. So we just go to a world writable directory, and then we run Python to set our UID, and we're done. So always check for extended capabilities. What else can we do? I have my Linux post here. Turns out there's a lot of things we can look for. We can look at the spool. You know, is there anything in var lib? Anything in here that stands out? Uh, dpkg apt, VMware is expected, grub bootloader, a spell, I spell, dbus, vim, miscellaneous, nothing even in there, os probably, guys, there's nothing here. Quick look in var db, quick, quick look in lib. There is no var db, and can you guess why? It's because this is, if we can't asterisk dash release, dum -ba -dum, this is Debian GNU Linux, and Debian, Debian GNU by default will not come configured for any var db, but it does have var lib. It does have var lib. So let's also go ahead and ls, um, lsaht slash etsy cron dot star. Is there any cron jobs going on here? Like, what's happening? 
crontab-l. So there's no cron jobs or no cron tabs for HANA. We haven't checked sewage just yet. We want to run through and make sure that we're looking for all the types of avenues, right? We want to learn here. Um, but absolutely, I mean, if you want to about the sewage thing right out of the gate, we can do that. And um, yeah. What is Anacron? Extra credit if you looked it up. Extra credit if you look up Anacron. Um, what about this? Show me all uh, the last files that were modified recently. This one is available on my website. So anything that was recently modified had recent write changes, recent any changes at all. How's that for a command for looking if cron is doing anything, updating a file, IO operations? You know, this gives you the latest and greatest. Think of it like a news feed for the entire file system. If we go back and do it here, it'll take a little longer and we'll get more. And we can even see that, you know, most of the stuff at the bottom, which is what's going to count here, because everything else is permission denied, is basic stuff for TCP, UDP, Unix, wireless, because it's got to be connected to the net, because everything on Linux is a file. If you're new to this and you don't even know what Linux is, I want you to burn this into your brain. Everything on Linux is a file. Your mouse is a file. Your screen display is a file. The color and contrast you choose is a file. Your webcam is a file. Your keyboard is a file. Your browser is a file that is working with other files. I promise you. So everything is a file. If we look up for any files that are recently modified, it would make sense that we see wireless, anything UDP, TCP, because it's got internet connectivity, and socket statistics. That's short for socket file descriptors and or SFDs. And um, where can I find your notes? Head on over to sirensecurity.io. Additionally, if you want to hop into Discord, we have this over here. If I scroll on up, you will see that I have my note template here, if that's what you're referencing. And aside from that, um, you know, there's a lot of other things that we can do. What about the environment variables? That's a thing. Is there any hidden environment variables that are doing anything funky? Doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like it. We already tried sudo l, you know? I mean, these are just things that I've collected as, as the types of things that have worked over even hundreds of machines, guys. So, you know, super, super cool stuff. If you don't have PSPY, there is a nice also thing here um, that I have where you can make your own kind of like IO tracker. Um, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, it's pretty cool. I actually kind of want to show and demonstrate this maybe. Um, so we'll touch this and then find an execute. And now, no, this went ahead and executed because we're already out of there. But in essence, you can basically create a file like this and it'll hang sometimes, but it's like a makeshift quick and dirty version of I need something like PSPY to be able to run for me. Um, you know, what is PSPY? Well, I mean, I can go to my transfers, toss up a simple HTTP server, run file on bin bash to make sure I get the correct architecture, copy my IP, curl my IP at HTTP this, and let's demonstrate PSPY for privilege escalation, right? PSPY looks like it's gonna be 64 today. Dash output is dot backslash or dot forward uh, PSPY 64. And oops, that, that command is not found. What about wget? Is it here? Do we even have file retrieval? Can we even do that? All right, we're getting it with wget. Additionally, we could have done a netcat transfer. See, we got that code 200. And I ch mod plus x, the piece by 64. Excellent job there. Is Valentine. Thank you for linking piece by dot slash piece by 64. Man, sometimes I will open up two shells 
I'm not even joking. Sometimes if, if I'm cruising on a machine or if I'm spying on a machine in an engagement for like a week or two, I'll leave this on and see if anybody SSH'd in. What files did they interact with? I mean, it's called Peace Spy for a reason. Um, this also will tell you exactly what cron jobs are happening, all IO operations across the system, and so on and so forth. For example, what if I try to SSH in again, right? SSH is HANA at this IP on port 61,000. Pay attention over here to the left. SSHD, connection accepted, and I'm going to say no, but you see the activity popped up here. Isn't that cool? Super, super useful. Super, super useful. So let's clear this out. Linux post, and time has come. Let's go through suids and guids. Suids and guids. I think suids and guids is a good idea. So uh, let's go through suids. Let's grab the GUIDs, and I think that we'll just go ahead and hit exit on this, and we'll copy over the SUITs, right? S-U-I-D-S, -S and G-U-I-D-S, and let's copy this here, and there we go. Awesome, awesome. Boom, bada bing. Now, does anybody see anything exotic? Oh, I'm stretching. I'm going to get some water. Huh? Does anybody see anything exotic happening here? Any exotic binaries? Dude, mock? Yeah, I see it right there from Snowzy. Mock, what is going on? Heckin' jeez, dude. Mock should not be there. What? 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 Okay, so let's go ahead and go to GTFO bins. You got it, guys. GTFO bins. You already know. We already there. Yeah, wall's fine. Wall is typical. Wall is typical. If you want to know what's typical, man, just install a Debian VM in a virtual box and just run the suid command, copy it over for reference. That's how I learned. That's how I did it. Thank you, Preysan. You're so welcome, dude. M-A-W-K. Um, as a suid, I know what we're gonna be able to do here, but it's, uh, I don't think it's, uh, I don't know if it's gonna work. I mean, we might be able to do this. Let's do mock begin system bin shell. No, unfortunately, that did not work. That's a lim that, oh, that's for limited suid. Uh, for an actual suid, uh, which is what we have, we have the ability to read files. Okay, okay. This is on system shell dread. I'll put that in here. On system shell dread. And remember to tune in June 14th, June 15th, and June 16th, I believe. Let me check my calendar. Because that's when we're going to be hitting up a lot more Active Directory, more difficult machines and PG practice. And we're going to be actually gearing up for this competition. Yeah, 14th, 15th, and uh, we're going to be concluding the preparation for the hackathon on the 16th with Siddiqui. Um, and then uh, the hackathon is off to the races off to the races. But let's go ahead and take a look at this. Mock. Ing, bird, sing. That mocking bird sing. All right. <laughs> I can see people face palming. That's from Dumb and Dumber. Yes, it is. So Etsy shadow is the answer here, guys. We want to reveal Reveal the shadow file to us. Dude. How about it, guys? How about it? Boom. Boom, 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 boom. 
So we're going to need this, and we're going to need anybody know where we're going with this? Anybody know? Anybody know where we're going with this? Anybody know? And let me go to machine, CD on systems shall dread. And let's go to files and let's touch shadow, nano shadow, paste, control X, Y, enter. And the password file. I see some suggestions in the chat. I do, I do. Start cracking it on paper. Yeah, so what you want to get out is your TI-84. <laughs> Yes. Yes, dude. We're going to need to break out the TI-84, guys. <laughs> and we're going to need to write down this key, case sensitive. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then we're going to run it through John the Ripper running off of a TI-84. <coughs> exactly. No, we're going to start cracking it on paper. No, I'm kidding. We're going to touch the shadow file. We're going to touch the password file. Good joke, though. That made me, that made me chuckle. We're going to paste this in. And what, is, what are we looking for? Okay, dude. Uh, Syphy's already got it. Unshadow, then the password, the shadow file, output to Twitch. Twi Twitch file crack me, maybe? Sure, that works. Then we cat twitch file crack me maybe. And so call me maybe. <laughs> All right, so we have the unshadow, right? And we've unshadowed the file, right? But we already had the shadow. So anyway, um, like look, if I cat the file here, right? And then here we scroll up, ah. Oh. Uh-huh. First time hearing about Unshadow? Okay, cool, cool. Requires a shadow file and a password file, but let's get to it. Let's get busy. We have John on Twitch file, crack me maybe, so call me maybe. Dash dash word list is equal to user share word lists. And by default on Kali Linux, we have that out of rocku.txt. And uh, now we wait. Now we wait. There is something lurking in the shadows here, boys and girls. There is something lurking in the shadows. Now I've gone along with what you guys have said. I've been follow along with this chat. I've been following, and there's something lurking in the shadows. Can anybody tell me what it is? While we let that crack, hmm, did anybody else notice it? It is here, in the depths of the oceans, my dude. Like my our good buddy, uh, also an OSCP, um, My mind just blanked out. Al Hazred would say, in the depths of the sea, okay, Cthulhu Fatagan, there is something lurking in the shadows of these depths. Can anybody spot it with their naked eye? Boom. TX45N, you're on fire today, dude. Good job. Good job, good job, well done. CPU limit, what the heck is that doing there? What the heck? I don't think that's normal, you know? I don't think that's normal. CPU limit, and speaking of CPU, my CPU is on fire. My CPU is on absolute fire right now. Oh goodness, have mercy, have mercy. And we haven't cracked it yet. We haven't cracked it yet. So we're gonna stop this. I love how we all went for mock. Dude, mock has incredible capability. If you can read something as root privileges, 
you guys got the idea. You want to go for the John, the John route, the unshadow, you know, give it some time. That may be an avenue, right? What if you could cat the pseudo or read the pseudoers file? Or what if you could read, you know, a proof file in the event that you're just going straight for the flag, like really quickly, you know, cough, cough, dude, cough, cough. So CPU limit, Cypher says, interesting. Haven't seen CPU for well now we have check it out same things gtfo bins watch this boys and girls watch this little trick for you cpu limit we have it as a suet bada boom bada bang does anybody know what this is about to be i'm going to change sh to dash for any Linux nerds out there. That's pound sign. This is gonna be pound sign. Heck yeah. All right. And that is that is how we do it. That's how we do it. Bling, ba bling, 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 bling. That is how we do it. Oh yeah, CD to the root directory, and here we are. We have completely compromised this machine and we have root privileges. Guys, this was a bit of a simpler machine. A bit of a simpler machine. But for those of you who do feel up to par and you're confident in your capabilities right now, I would invite you to join us on the 14th and 15th and 16th as we tackle some of the harder machines straight from off sex PG practice. And uh, we're gonna be going all kinds of Active Directory, all kinds of Windows exploitation. This was an easier, easier box. But I love how, let's recognize the important part more than anything else, that we as a community were able to work through it and that we got some people here who are now a little bit more interested in proactive security and so on and so forth. So what do we do? What's standard? This is an engagement, guys. We just got root. You know, we're going to do an if config. Oh, they're not there? Okay. We'll do IPA. We'll do a host name. We're going to provide the ID. Who am I to show our effective authority over the machine? The networking information. We'll hit print screen. Is not wanting to work. No, I promise you, you would print screen and my burp suite crashed. Okay, that's fine. That's okay. Burp suite crashed. But you know what? At the end of the day, um, you would go ahead and screenshot all that information. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to, if this lets me, uh, in a broken Chromium box, we're gonna go to offsec.com forward slash webinars. See what, oh, no internet, okay. Well, it's not that we don't have internet, but we do need to get Burt back up. That is my bad, guys. That is my bad, I, I don't know. I Linux just had a, it had a hiccup. It had a hiccup. But we want to check out the webinars, and we also want to check out some additional upcoming information and go over the prizes. Is anybody interested in the prizes for this hackathon? What if I told you you could earn your certification straight from proving yourself? If you think you're confident and you want certif you know, to be certified in binary exploitation, pen through, you know, whatever, pen or... You know, whatever it might be, web, it was a suggestion. We definitely noted that down. We'll go over that in a second. Proxy, open browser, never the key ring, but offsec.com forward slash webinars. And let's take a look, right? Let's take a look, see. Jeremy Miller, what's going on, Harbinger? All right, so, oh, it's actually Paul Griffin has taken up the spot here. 
All right, Paul, head of customer success at OffSec, is interviewing Jeremy Rowe, a field senior information security officer at Senac. And uh, shout outs to Senac and the Senac Red team. Shout outs, dude. But aside from that, aside from that, if you want to watch any other webinars, they're here. Let's take a look at Discord. Oh, actually, before we do that, let's, you know, go over maybe some takeaway concepts. Can anybody think of some takeaway concepts that we might have from this particular machine? What are some things that we learned? What good is hacking a machine if we don't take anything away? Well, I mean, we learned how to SSH into very, you know, basic stuff, but we learned how to SSH into alternative ports. Alternative ports. We did. It might have been pretty simple stuff, but we also learned about reading sensitive files, right? With exotic SUID binaries. Um, you know, we learned additionally about mock, uh, shadow, John. I mean, we got that in there. Um, what else did we learn about? You know, chmod 600, the IDRSA. Just remember it. Just remember it. And, um, you know, sometimes we got to be extra. Uh, we got to, we got to have, we got to have an extra keen eye for usernames. Remember that we got that from FTP. Remember that. So I'm going to copy this. We're going to bring it on over to Discord. And we're going to put on system shell dread. This is PG play. And bada boom, bada bing. Here are the notes for anybody from the stream. Make sure you check that out. And additionally, I said I would talk about the rewards. So let's go ahead and talk about those. If we scroll on up, scroll on up, scroll in on up, make sure you bookmark this link. Make sure you bookmark this. But scrolling on up, we have first, second, third uh, prizes for pen, for EXP. You'll see that you guys, third place will get you like three months of PG practice. Second prize will get you pen 300, 90 day uh, course access. And first place for all of these, you'll get, if you want L1 straight up and you're shot at the certification, all of L1, you know, that's good value, man. Good value. So L1 for pen 200, or you want L1 for EXP. Maybe you're interested in binary exploitation. Binary exploitation, guys. You know who you are. And uh, we also have L1 for pen 300. With that all being said, I'm gonna go ahead and swap to this and take a look at the chat just to see if anybody has any additional questions before we conclude the stream. Any additional questions, guys? Anything at all? Anything at all going once? This will be made available on YouTube. This will be made available on YouTube on Offensive Security's official YouTube channel. Absolutely. Thank you for the stream. Thank you. Thank you. You guys are welcome. Thank you for being the heartbeat of OffSec. And we appreciate each and every one of you. I appreciate each and every one of you and the kind comments that we've gotten. You guys are absolute rock stars. I would say see you next month, but boys and girls, it's going to be the week after next, 14th, 15th, 16th. I think I've said it like a bajillion times this stream. Jot it down. Jot it down. 14th, 15th, and 16th. It's back-to-back -back PG practice machines with Siren and Siddiqui uh, from Offensive Security. And uh, it's going to be that kind of gearing up for the serious business for some of those PG practice machines and our CTFs and the whole hackathon event. So on behalf of OffSec, thank you guys for being here. And uh, keep up the hard work. 
And uh, happy hacking, intruders.